Hello, my name is Mariel. In today's video, I will be showing you the brainstorming slash idea generating process that I personally use before I start creating the manuscript of a book. To give you some perspective of what I mean, here is a look of what my publishing process looks like. The part of the process we will be looking at in this video is highlighted in green. And as you can see, brainstorming is a step that takes place after I've done my niche research and after I've decided on the general niche I want to make my book around. And it's also the step that takes place right before I start creating the manuscript or the book interior. So before we get into my somewhat chaotic ideation slash brainstorming process, there is a tool or a technique that I want to very briefly explain because it's something that I've adapted as part of my brainstorming process. To begin with, when I am making a book, whether it's an activity book, a cookbook, or a log book, I make an effort to have an audience-focused approach during every step of the bookmaking process. And this approach goes hand in hand with a tool called a user persona. A user persona is an empathy tool used in different fields such as UX designing, product development, marketing, among others. It is used to help design and develop a product or a service based on the notion of putting oneself in the shoes of the end user. Now, visually speaking, here are a couple of examples of what user personas look like. They look like resumes, but they are basically a fictitious characterization or an archetype created to represent a group of users of a given product or service. This archetype is created based on data gathered through research, be it through conducting interviews or surveys, and a user persona may include information such as their demographic, their needs, their motivation to use a product, and the context in which they may need or use a given product. Now, when I am brainstorming for my books, I don't actually create fully fleshed out research-based user personas. Instead, I use the notion of a user persona and sketch out very rough assumption-based personas that I can work around as I build my book. Well, now that you understand what my focus is, let's dive right into the actual brainstorming process. Step number one, research. After I've selected a niche in which I want to make a book, I will do research with the goal of finding out what needs and problems the book I'm creating might solve or the potential benefits it may bring. I'll usually look for reliable resources for this information. For instance, I'll look for two or more studies, articles, blog posts that confirm the benefits that this type of book could provide. And time-wise, this research is done in a disorganized, go with my gut sort of way where I'll spend from 30 minutes to an hour going down the rabbit hole, just soaking up information from one resource to another until I feel I've gathered enough information to help me brainstorm. So the broad niche I chose for today's brainstorming session is password logbooks. And after doing some research, I found that the problems this type of book could potentially solve are related to organization and the fragility of human memory. And based on the information I gathered, I can think of three different users that I could potentially make um, password logbooks for, which are seniors, business owners, and millennials. Step number two, creating assumption-based user personas. The user personas I decided to make for this brainstorming exercise are based on the following criteria, which I think are contextually relevant to password logbooks demographic, profession, and their habitual usage of technology. My first assumption-based user persona, who is the archetype for seniors, is Tim. Tim is a 72-year-old, recently retired man who owns a desktop computer and, a, and an Android phone. He uses Facebook and Skype to keep in touch with family and friends, and he has one email account, and he occasionally checks his bank account from his computer. My second assumption-based persona is Penny. She is a 45-year-old who recently opened her own cafe, where she provides complimentary free internet to her customers. 
She changes her internet password twice a day, and she has employees working for her cafe in two different shifts. In her case, I'm thinking of a password logbook, or I guess it's more of a password tracker that is tailored to exclusively keep track of the cafe's Wi-Fi passwords. My third assumption-based persona is Thomasina. She is in her mid-30s. She is a freelancer who works from home. She has five different social media accounts and at least 10 different um, subscription services. She can't exactly remember them all, but she believes they are all necessary. She has three email accounts, one PayPal account, two bank accounts, and she often forgets her passwords, but she's also distrusting of using a physical notebook to write down passwords. Instead, she has a Google Doc where she keeps track of her passwords written down in Pig Latin. Step number three, brainstorming to create book interiors. Now, based on these three assumption-based personas, I decided to brainstorm ideas for three different products. Product number one is a Wi-Fi password logbook or tracker for business owners, which will have a space to write down the date, um, the password of the day, and the signature of the person responsible for changing the password. This will be a book that is shared by the employees of the business. With this in mind, when designing the book cover, I would be inclined to give it a clean cut, classic, professional look. Product number two would be a password lockbook for seniors. In this book, I would be inclined to include a table of content and numbered pages. Now, I've seen many password lockbooks that have pages organized alphabetically, like, like a phone book, but putting myself in the shoes of a senior like Tim who has less than 20 passwords to track, I think it would make more sense to divide the book into relevant sections like emails, um, bank accounts, and socials rather than alphabetically. Product number three is a password lockbook for millennials. In this book, I would also include a table of content and number pages like the previous product, but I would also include a page with, with uh, tips on how to write clues and codes to help remember passwords, and I might include more sections and more pages to meet the needs of tech-savvy millennials. That's pretty much what my pre-bookmaking brainstorming process is like. I hope it encourages you to think creatively and to see the importance of having an audience-focused mindset. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to catch you in my next video.